Welcome to today's webcast, Digital Account Opening, New Path to Profitability. My name is Lisa Valentine, and I'm Senior Contributing Editor for Banking Exchange. Joining me today is Brian Higgins, First Vice President, Product and Channel for First Financial Bank. First Financial Bank is headquartered in Cincinnati and has $8.2 billion in assets. Also joining us today is Steve Craig. Steve directs products and experience for MyTech's global identity business. Now our goal in the one hour that we have with you today is to explore the connection between digital banking, actually specifically digital account opening, and how that impacts top line growth and overall profitability. But before I go ahead and share the agenda and we jump into the presentations, I do have just a couple of quick housekeeping items. Now you can resize and rearrange your windows on your screen at any time. Um, you can also, on the bottom of your screen, there are those opposing arrows. That's the restore button. So you can go ahead and click that and you'll return your screen to its original view. We will leave some time for Q&A at the end of the presentation. So, but you don't have to wait till the end to submit your questions. Submit them at any time. Type your question into the text box at the bottom of your screen and just hit submit. During the presentation, we will also have a polling question. To answer that, you just click on the correct answer in the presentation box and hit submit. Now, if you're having any trouble with your audio, there is an audio window which is above the speaker description window, and you can adjust the audio as you see fit. But if you have any technical problems, go ahead and submit your problem in the Ask a Question box, and one of our te technicians will get right back to you. And finally, if you would like to download a copy of the presentation slides, there is a handout icon that you can click to download uh, a PDF. All right, my role as moderator is to share with you some of what we at Banking Exchange have, been, have seen happening in the digital space. You know, trends, challenges we hear from bankers, and hopefully to offer you some ideas for what you need to do to move forward with digital account opening. I'm going to then turn the presentation over to Brian Higgins, and Brian's going to share his insights from his more than 20 years of financial services experience um, with both banks and technology providers. Brian's going to provide you with the banker's perspective on the digital headwinds and tailwinds affecting digital account opening, and share how digital fits into First Financial's banking strategy. He's also going to offer you, you specific ideas on how to move to digital account opening for both new and existing customers. And then last but not least, Steve Craig with MyTech is going to share how digital ID scanning and authentication technology can offer a solution to you know, that risk versus convenience dilemma that banks really have to grapple with uh, in both mobile and desktop account opening. Now, as part of his presentation, Steve is, has several short videos that he's going to play. So you'll be able to actually see live what successful, what successful a digital account opening for banks looks like. We'll then move to the Q&A. Now, for digital account opening, you know, the question is, is now the time? Uh, yeah, it kind of is. Um, for the past several years, we've been talking about digital banking, whether that's through a desktop or a mobile device. And we know that adoption of online and mobile banking has been, it's been pretty robust. But there's been a, a stumbling block for banks, and that is how to use digital to allow consumers to open accounts. Now, granted, some of these stumbling blocks are, are they're pretty big. You know, one that pops to mind is KYC requirements. So how do you comply with know your customer requirements when your customers are sitting at a computer screen or using their mobile phone and not face to face with you? I mean, that's one of the, the challenges that I know Steve is going to address. So, um, you know, we'll see some ways to, to address that. But I wanted to share with you a couple of analyst quotes um, that, that really drive home the fact that it is the time for digital account opening. Alex Johnson with Mercator says, today the mobile channel contributes a small trickle of new accounts for most banks. Within a few years, it'll be a flood. Javelin says that bankers who are intent on preparing for the day when digital channels dominate should rethink their timing because that day may have already arrived. Now let's just take a quick look at consumer adoption of digital channels. 
the numbers are definitely trending upward, both in actual usage and preference to use digital. For example, use of mobile banking increased 4% between 2015 and 2016, according to the Federal Reserve. And in an ABA survey, preference for mobile banking increased by 200% in five years. And if you look at the chart at the bottom of the slide, you'll see that every other channel, branches, ATMs, call centers, decreased in usage, except for internet and mobile banking. So digital banking usage is increasing, but digital account opening, it's, it's still an outlier. 80% of new accounts are still originated in the branch, according to Deloitte. Only 26% of banks even allow digital or allow mobile account opening, and that's according to the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. Now, the figures from Mercator that are in the bottom chart, they're a little bit different than Deloitte's, but what I want to point out is that the only type of account opening method that is increasing is mobile account opening. Okay, time for a polling question. We'd like to gauge where you all are in your journey toward digital account opening. And I'm sure that um, answering this question will help uh, Brian and Steve in their remarks as well. So if you would, please answer the following by selecting the most appropriate answer and hitting submit. How would you describe your bank's journey to digital account opening? Still in the consideration stage? Or in the process of rolling it out? Already have or already have customers using digital account opening. And while we wait for everybody to weigh in, let me remind you that there is time for Q&A at the end, but uh, type your question at any time in the Ask a Question box and hit Submit. Okay, let's see. It looks like most people have weighed in. Okay, wow, it's pretty evenly split. Um, 36%, about a third, a little more than a third, are still considering whether to offer it. The same number are in the process, and 28% of customers are using digital account opening. That's that's kind of interesting because only 26, what do we say, 26% of banks offer account opening. And I'm sure that um, I know that Brian is going to speak to these results as well. So if many consumers are already using digital banking, so why don't we see even more consumers adopting digital account opening? Well, we've already noted that three quarters of banks don't offer digital account opening. So obviously that's impeding adoption because it's not even available. But let's take a look at those banks that do offer digital account opening. Four out of 10 of those consumers that try to open a digital account don't complete the process. The most common reasons are it takes too much time, and the customer is asked to, to, to supply, in their mind, too much information. Now, in another survey, and that's this one, uh, the pie chart, um, is from a survey by Javelin, almost half of those customers who started to open an account digitally decided that they didn't need the account after all, 47%. Uh, I'm not going to focus on that chunk of people that have abandoned because I know that Brian is going to share his thoughts on ways that you all can decrease that statistic. But let's look, look at some of the other reasons that banks do have control over that impact the 53% of account opening abandonment. The process was too complicated. It took too long. The bank wanted documents uh, you know, they didn't have. I couldn't get my questions answered. All those reasons speak to the customer experience being poor. And that's something that banks can address. And Brian and Steve will provide some more details on that as we go through. All right, you're going to hear more about the benefits of digital account opening from Brian and Steve, so I'm just going to touch on a few of the reasons um, that we think are important at Banking Exchange as to why you should embrace digital account opening. That first statistic is pretty compelling. You know, if a client do does not open another account or service within the first 30 days, there's an 80% chance that is the only set of products a customer will own. Wow, so those first 30 days are pretty important. And if customers have to go to a branch, you've just made it a lot more difficult for them to open that second or that third account. 
Customers want, expect, and demand digital account opening. Let's face it, these customers are used to one-click shopping at Amazon, and so asking them to go through this arduous process to open a bank, a simple bank account, just doesn't sit right with them. Uh, another reason to embrace digital account opening is to increase acquisition rates, especially for these basic products, like a simple checking account. These basic products don't need a branch employee. If employees can open these less complex on less complex accounts online or via mobile, it's less expensive for banks and it frees branch staff up for more value-added activities such as cross-sales and customer outreach or prospecting. I want to just share two quotes from bankers I've had the pleasure of speaking with about their digital banking strategy. I think it kind of sums up well the importance of digital banking and digital account opening for our industry. The first quote is from Denny Hudson. Denny is CEO of Seacoast Bank, and that bank is in Florida, and they are rocking and rolling in their digital strategy. And they, they are 100% in. <laughs> and Denny says, digital is fundamental to our business and to the future of the entire financial services industry. Melissa Stevens is with Fifth, Fifth Third, and they are also very forward thinking in their digital strategy. And she says, the key to digital engagement is to understand the needs and behaviors of customers so that you can be there from the moment they need you. <clears throat> All right, so now what do we need? I think that uh, digital account opening is going to have a similar trajectory to remote deposit capture in that, you know, customers didn't even know they needed remote deposit capture. But once it was introduced, they found they can't live without it. I think digital account opening is um, going to be a, a little bit the same way. You know, offer it and they will come. But a couple of things have to happen first, and these are things that I know Brian and, and Steve are going to go in more depth to, and Steve will actually show you some demos. But um, let me just touch on them briefly. Data entry on your telephone, on your mobile device, is just not fun. But you have every phone, every smartphone has a camera, and consumers are used to using it for everything. So why not, why not enable the, the customers to take a picture of your driver's license? A simplified process. You know, the, the account opening process was designed for a customer to come into the branch. It's a long process. There's lots of signatures and paperwork. But with digital, you, you can't just overlay um, an antiquated process on top of digital. You need to actually change the process to make it easier and streamlined for consumers. Customers are rightly so very concerned about security of their, their personal data. You know, there's been so many data breaches that have gotten so much press. Um, they're a little skittish. So banks are going to need to go out of their way to help customers feel comfortable sharing their personal information. Fast, accurate identification. We saw in one of the uh, earlier surveys that one reason that customers abandon the account opening process is that it just takes too long. So banks need a way to shorten the identification process so it's quick and easy and painless. The entire process should be completed via the mobile app. You, you can't ask question, uh, customers to start the account opening process and then come into a branch. Um, it needs to all happen, fully digital. And then finally, customers may have questions. And there was, uh, you know, one statistic said that customers uh, abandoned digital account opening because they couldn't get their questions answered. So it's important to have some way for them to, to get immediate feedback. And live chat is an awesome way to do that. So those are just some of the things that we see that banks will need to address to drive adoption of digital account opening. And both, as I mentioned, both Brian and Steve will give you more specifics on how to actually address all those items. So with that, I'm going to move to the next slide and I'm going to turn the presentation over to Brian Higgins, First Financial Bank, to share his perspectives on the challenges and benefits of digital and talk you through how the bank is moving forward on their digital strategy. Brian, let me pass it over to you. Great, Lisa, thank you, thank you. And if I noted the results of the survey correctly, 
Sounds like 72% of the folks on this webinar today are in the process of considering or are just beginning the journey to offer digital account opening. So I hope the information we share today is of value as you continue to advance those decisions and progress down that path to, to offering digital account opening. You know, when we think about digital account opening, as Lisa notes, there are challenges. We, we can't shy away from those. But there are many more compelling reasons for all FIs to be heading down this path and offer the full digital experience, including account opening. Now, the one, ex one statistic that stands out to me that Lisa shared is that 80%, right? That 80% of those that research bank accounts online come into the branch to open the account. And I've heard that shared many, many times. But I've always wondered, and as you, as you dive a little bit deeper into that, the statistic is true, but the conclusions and the perception that it leads is not. And what I mean by that is, it is true, 80% are coming in and in the branches is opening it up, but I don't believe that that's because that's their preference. I believe it's because a, many FIs do not currently offer the digital, mobile, or online account opening, and even those that do, and Lisa shared some of those abandonment statistics, we've made it too hard. As an industry, we've made it too hard. We've got to do better. And I share that, that the, the importance of digital account opening, and I share that I don't believe 80% want to come into the branch to open the account. And, and I'll say it's not a knock on the branches. I'm, I'm a proponent of the value of branches, but it is true that to compete effectively today, you do need to, you need to allow your clients to do more than just check their account and process some basic transactions in the digital world. You need to be able to open them to support them, enable them, and allow them to buy directly from you in a digital experience. Now, before embark on the journey, you can see there on the slide, there are some headwinds. And I want to talk about each of these here for, for briefly for a minute. The first one you see is historical distribution model. And what I mean by that is two things that stand out to me. One is, in banking today, there still is a pervasive brand centricity. Right? Very brand-centric in many, many cases. Again, evidenced by the number of eyes that are not yet offering digital account opening. And this is one of the reasons why we haven't advanced it as far as we could. And in fact, I've actually seen a statistic recently where only 41% of financial institutions, banks, credit unions, offer a fully digital experience, allowing them to complete everything online. And even still less than 50% that offer the ability to begin an application online, even if it requires some follow-up from a branch or some central central office. The brand centricity that I mentioned is usually justified that by 80% statistic that I shared. And by comments I hear all the time, anecdotal, subjective, that if they don't come into the branch to open the account, how will we know them? And we'll talk about that in the, here in a minute because there are ways to know them on a digital space and a digital relationship. The other distribution, historical distribution headwind is a bias towards new account acquisition. You know, certainly over the, over the development of existing business, quote unquote, cross-sell. We talk about cross-sell, but I look at performance management systems, goals, incentive plans. They tend to be biased more towards net new production, new acquisition of households relationships. And that is a harder of the two when you're looking at digital account openings to go up to net new. And we'll cover that here in a moment as I talk about how you can use your digital channels to go after existing clients and deepen a relationship versus new. Legacy account opening processes. Bank account applications were designed for an in-branch experience, and they were built to capture as much information as possible on the client in that first conversation. This does not work in a digital world. Customers just do not have the patience. People's expectations of a digital experience have been set. The market's already been set by many other people besides FIs. It, Amazon was mentioned earlier. There is a lot of People out there that are doing this very, very well outside of financial services have set the expectation for a quick, easy, simple experience, and we have to honor that. And signature cards. You know, bringing the old world of wet signatures to a digital account opening fight just doesn't work. We've got to think of a better way to authenticate and work through any of that, that the compliance requirements, KYC requirements as we move forward. Migration to mobile. Lisa shared it. Consumers have voted and they've chosen mobile over online. Beyond account opening, just general use of digital banking, we're seeing, and I don't think we're unique, 
that more than 50% of our logins to our, to our digital banking is coming through a mobile device, a smartphone or a tablet. Stag the PC online account opening, PC online access to digital banking has stagnated and mobile is where we're seeing the growth. And that comes with some challenges. The main being is the, the mobile experience has to be much different. To optimize for mobile is much different than even online, where the need to type, the need to fill in a lot of information is even more disadvantageous in a mobile experience. And I've noticed recently, um, Lisa shared 26%, but I'd actually had seen a survey that said only 20% of financial institutions, a little bit less, excuse me, had optimized account opening for smartphones which means we're still relying a little bit too much on keystroke data entry. We've got to simplify that experience. And in fact, the only channel that is increasing is mobile, so we have to be ready for it. It's here. The other is the conveying the value proposition. We, many FIs have a strong brand, a value proposition that is hard, extremely difficult to convey, reflect in the digital world. Great service, how do you truly offer that before in a digital experience? That's something that as you bring that forward, as you think through it, those around the journey, be very thoughtful in terms of how you're going to replicate that and deliver that experience and the support in the digital world. And the non-traditional competition. Customers, as I mentioned, are not only comparing your account opening to other financial institutions, they're comparing it to other groups, be it consumer product groups, be it an Amazon, be it a USS, USAA in insurance, be it a Fidelity Investments on Investments, the market's been set of what that experience needs to look and feel like, and we've got to make sure that we are competing effectively in that regard. And the other is FinTech is coming. There are people that, as we sit here today in this webinar, who are actually working to take advantage of the market inefficiency created by our failure to optimize the account opening experience. And I'll, I'll share a story, a personal story. A few months ago, I was sitting in a FinTech session that was hosted by a local incubator here in Cincinnati. Uh, some really interesting things were being shared. And, but as I sat there, I had a oh my god moment, realizing that there are some people standing up here presenting to me that are effectively trying to put me out of business. Now, I don't know if these folks will hit on the big idea that will work, but you know what? If they're up there pitching this to me, then at some point there's somebody else who's working on a similar idea that will be successful. We have to be ready for that. So I hope what I shared doesn't come across as too daunting for those that are just beginning this journey or considering it. There are real headwinds out there, but I can assure you they are surmountable. And as an industry, there are some really strong tailwinds that are assisting us in this regard. So covering the tailwinds, what are the things that are helping us in this regard? One is customers, customers, consumer trust. I know I've seen the polls, I've seen the articles that consumers don't trust banks, credit unions. However, I've also seen a lot of polls that say that individual consumers trust their FI. And maybe more importantly, I've seen many studies that show that consumers across industries rate FIs, financial institutions, banks, credit unions as the ones where they have the highest degree of confidence in with respect to protecting their privacy and their confidential information. That is an important tailwind that we can take advantage of as an industry. Compelling products. The simple thing is we sell stuff people need. I've seen articles in the past that say maybe banks, credit unions won't exist in the future. Mm -mm, I doubt that, but maybe. But even in those articles, they say people will need the banking products. We can't forget that as an industry. We have something that people, all consumers in the U.S., need and want and value. And that is a huge tailwind in our, regard, in our favor. The power of data. We, as an industry, each of us individually, have an immense repository of consumer data. Harnessing this data to drive insights on existing clients or to extend our insights out into the market can be a significant competitive advantage. Identity verification and fraud protection. We are very good at this as an industry. The challenge is we got to be able to adapt those in-branch and those more manual processes that we have today that are really working well and use that core competency but adapt it to a digital world. And again, that we can be a strong competitive advantage for us. And the good news is pro proven models exist. There are people that we can follow that can help us in this journey. 
and a lot of people have done a good job that we can follow and, and emulate. So why do we want to attempt this journey? Well, honestly, I mentioned the FinTech. If we don't do something here, there are other people that are trying to disintermediate us and steal our market share. People are going down this path. So I share the first step is to begin with existing clients. Existing relationships re will represent your best opportunity to make progress in the digital world with account opening. Because even if you have an a industry leading account opening process, most of your new accounts should be opened by existing clients. And, I, and my guess is your experience will show that to be true. And we, we have a lot of advantages. We know them already. The consumer is already predisposed to trust and do business with us. And we know how to reach them. We have the channels to reach them. What will it take to maximize this opportunity? Data. This isn't big data, it's small data. We're not talking about the big data revolution. We have enough information to be able to just understand what's relevant to our clients and reach out to them effectively, which is really how we can shrink that consideration set. And what I mean by that is don't give them the full litany of products that you offer. Make sure you're targeting specifically solutions to fulfill needs that you've identified. And that, in particular, will help really address that big, scary statistic that Lisa shared, that 47% are abandoning the process to not needing the product. Giving them the right offer, the right solution, will bring that number down. And since clients are predisposed to doing business with you, you can, by anticipating needs and making relevant offers, mitigate the risk that they will conduct a general search. If you give them the right offer at the right time, that will mitigate, prevent them from going out and seeking another solution. They will buy from you. And we also talk about being simplified, easy. And this is a key point. What does it mean? We'll all probably have our own take on this, but a couple of things to keep in mind. Minimize typing, keystrokes, pre-fill, the image capture on the license. Those are key. Make it as easy as for them as possible. Eliminate the need to exit the channel. Don't have them leave. Allow them to complete digital. I understand the value in a branch, getting them in a branch, but there's other ways to, to be able to emulate that and make that happen. Don't take that point here in the account opening. Let them buy from you. And get rid of any data request that is not necessary, absolutely necessary to complete that sale. As you look at existing customers, there are four milestones along the journey. There's engage, explore, purchase, and use. When you look at it, think about the engage side, this is about cross-selling. We've got them as customers, they're predisposed, identify the needs, mature your client analytic capabilities, and deliver relevant offers. That will allow your online experience, your digital experience, to be your strongest, highest selling branch, if you want to think of it that way. When you look at Explore, here it's all about minimizing those choices. Focus on need, not product. Don't present everything. You bring those specific solutions to bear based on how you anticipate the needs for the customer. Purchase is that simplicity that we discussed. Refill, minimize the questions. In order to use, what I, what I want to emphasize here is it doesn't end with them opening the account. You've got to make sure that your overall digital experience is one that makes sense. If they can open an account online, make sure the tools, the mobile remote deposit capture, the bill pay are there. Those access convenience tools are working well. Measure, engage, and incent, the last bullet on the slide. This is a sales channel treated as such. No different than any other sales channel that you have. Use of digital engagement tools is a leading indicator of your client's engagement and propensity to buy more products. Understanding this can allow you to leverage limited incentive offers dollars and more wisely and efficiently allocate them to the right clients to get the biggest bang. So as we, those are existing clients. And we're going to think about how, I'm going to share now how we move to new clients to the bank. Brian, can I interrupt you for just a second? I just I just thought of a question I'd, I'd like to ask. Of we were talking about new clients, and now we're going to um, or ex existing clients, excuse me, and now how to move to new clients. Um, at your bank, though, what's the breakdown of digital account opening of new versus existing customers? I guess how many of these accounts are cross sales, and how many are new customer relationships? Yeah, sure. So currently we're sitting at probably just shy, high 70s, so about 78, 79% across sell uh, versus the 21, 22% that would be new clients. Uh, and I had mentioned earlier about your digital account opening should be your most successful, highest point branch as it relates to cross sales, and that is the fact with us, the case with us. Great. Thank you. 
Great, great question. Thank you. So as we think about moving on to new clients, just a quick note before we get into that. I'm, I'm presenting this in a very linear fashion. I don't mean to imply it has to be this way. But I do want to emphasize that your biggest opportunity and probably the easiest path to start the journey is with existing customers. And as you learn that, and, and that should be a point of emphasis, and as you get better at that, you'll be able to actually be stronger as you get into the external clients. Uh, jumping right to net new relationships can be really difficult. Test, measure, and learn with your existing first. Okay, so when we think about extending to new clients, a few key points to keep in mind. One, protect your existing brand. You've got a value proposition. Jumping into the digital world with an offer or revised value proposition that isn't available to your existing clients, especially if you're competing in the markets that you're in today, can have unintended consequences. Internet-only rates, things like that, um, that your existing customers could see or discover can cause unintended consequences. Just be thoughtful as you approach that. One way you can do so is be very selective on the markets and the segments in which you target. Personally, I prefer to start my learnings in markets or with segments where I have very low market share or I'm not really known. That allows me to be able to test, measure, learn, and bring brands, out, bring value propositions out to see what best resonates to folks that don't have a relationship with us yet. Be honest, right? If you're, if you're competing in an existing market, there's a reason people haven't purchased from you yet. And if you're going out to a new market, you've got to have something that's going to resonate, that's going to cut through the noise. You really need to think hard about your online value proposition is. And that is a way we can test. Test it in those areas where you don't have high, high concentration, high market share, and apply those learnings and eventually bring it into those markets. Onboarding. Similar to existing, it doesn't end with the sale. Once you've got the sale made online digitally, You've got a limited amount of time to get that new client to engage, meaning downloading your app, activating their debit card, all the attributes that you assign to a truly deep relationship with a customer and an engaged customer. You need to build those supporting processes to support this new relationship. As you look at the milestones for digital account opening for new clients, you're going to see some common steps shared with the existing client process. But there are some unique dimensions. Clients, new clients, excuse me, really prospects at this point have a much greater likelihood of abandoning the process. There's exit ramps for them. There are, there are construction zones where they won't pass, right? Most of them are things that we place in their way, right? 40% are failing to complete an application. I'll ask any of the banker on this line, imagine if 40% of your customers entered your branch, began working with one of your associates to open an account, and then walked out before it was completed, how would you respond? That sense of urgency you would have needs to apply to your digital channel. And that's something that we as an in industry need to have more of in the terms of urgency. Ensure data capture and follow-up routines. We've got, if someone exits, if someone fails to complete and abandons near the very end, are you capturing that information? Do you have procedures to follow up and re try to re-engage that customer and help guide and support them to complete that process. It's a great sales pipeline, lead generation pipeline. With new clients, the importance of your public website grows. This may seem obvious, but many websites don't have a consistent call to action and don't present information in an easily, easily digested way. One of the things I see all the time is, I, I don't know if folks, if I use the term placemat, if everybody knows what I'm talking about, but it's that large piece of paper or maybe laminated that exists in almost every branch which has a list of all your account options on it and all the services and features. All right? It's great in a branch if somebody wants to walk a client through that and direct them and guide them. It doesn't work in a digital world. Giving somebody too many options, digitizing your placemat just doesn't work. We've got to be able to use decision engines, simple, easy, easily answered through clicks, through toggle buttons, questions, that will then allow us to be able to present back a specific recommendation to that consumer. We also have simplicity and ease. You know, with these customers, it's, it's more difficult to authenticate. Right? It's more difficult. You don't know them yet. 
there's some truth to that. However, as I mentioned, we're really good at this as an industry. That being able to really combine and, and build a confluence of authentication and usability can be a significant advantage to consumers. And then ultimately, building a relationship. A consumer beginning their relationship with you through a digital channel is no less your customer than anyone walking into your branch. Don't discount the need to nurture that relationship and grow it. As you look on the slide, you see the, the milestones are a little bit different, right? Need, research, purchase, engage. What I, what I want to share here is there's a, there's a step that's a little bit harder with new accounts, which is identifying the need. But again, using your data and being able to understand your existing clients can help you fulfill that and, and having the right public website experience to drive them to is critical. Research, new customers that don't have a relationship with you will research. So make it easy for them to find their information. Make it easy to minimize the choices. Use those decision engines. And yeah, let them buy, all right, which is the purchase. And we've talked about a lot of the, the concepts here in terms of making it simple, easy, eliminate the friction. There's lots of things we can do here. I know the, Steve and the folks here will share a little bit more about that here in a minute. And then the onboarding process and build a relationship. This is a true customer, regardless of what channel they come into. Treat it the same way that you have with any other channel. Now, in this session, uh, now mainly, and we mainly focused on the tactical challenges associated with optimizing the digital channel and account opening. I do want to, I do want to acknowledge, though, that there are some broader organizational issues that are out there. I uh, don't have time to cover them today, but hey, this is a big change management issue, right? Opening a new sales channel, how you, how you choose to redirect, reallocate resources and capital and funding to grow that channel, right? And how internal operating processes will have to change. It's not going to be easy. I don't want to say that it is. And it's going to take time and commitment. And we're not where we need to be or where we want to be, what we're getting there. And I feel comfortable and confident that we've got a plan. So it's not impossible, and it is absolutely necessary. So hopefully this discussion has given you some perspective on the challenges, but more so on the opportunities and how to be and take advantage of them with digital account opening. I'll now turn it over to Steve from MyTech, who will demonstrate some of the capabilities they've developed to enable and optimize the account opening process. Steve? Thanks, Brian. Uh, I think your framework is, is great. And thank you, Lisa, for your comments earlier. My name is Steve Craig, and I'm the Director of Products and Experience at MyTech. Um, one thing that we really obsess about here at MyTech is how to say yes to more good customers. So I have got a couple slides for you that will take you through information about MyTech, our products. We've got a couple pre-recorded demos, and then we want to get right into Q&A so, uh, Q so we can answer some of your questions. Let me go ahead and kick off to the next slide. So if you're not familiar with MyTech, you may have uh, used one of our um, flagship products, uh, Mobile Deposit. If you've ever taken a picture of a check and deposited it through a smartphone app, that is a technology that we invented that we um, power. We are a, a public company. We're traded on the NASDAQ. We've got offices in San Diego, London, and Amsterdam. Um, our Mobile Deposit product uh, recently achieved uh, one billion transaction milestone, so over a billion checks have been processed through our technologies. We've got over 5,200 companies, uh, financial institutions, that are using our technologies. Our um, footprint with end users is about 70 million. So 70 million people have gone through the mobile deposit transaction process or one of our identity um, uh, technologies. We're a global leader in uh, document expertise for identity documents not just U.S. Uh, driver's license and state IDs, but also passports and other international documents. And we're a trusted partner. Um, we're dedicated to uh, having great user experiences and to make sure that your customers, your end users, have the best uh, possible experience, whether they're trying to deposit a check or if they're opening an account. The focus today, though, isn't on deposit. It's on account opening. And we want to think about some of the key drivers and trends around this. Um, Brian has touched on those. Uh, Lisa set the stage. The way that we see it, some of the key drivers uh, are, of course, demand from consumers. Uh, they want digital and mobile onboarding uh, um, transactions. The data is showing a lot of growth there. Um, and then, of course, financial institutions want to increase revenue in those digital channels and make sure that they're capturing um, those customers as they come through. It's a lot easier to abandon a transaction on digital. It's as simple as closing an app or, or going from one browser session to the next. And so we want to make sure that 
consumers get locked in and get through that experience as quickly as possible. Now, some of the fa factors that are affecting successful onboarding are needs for um, know your customer and customer information processes. So uh, knowledge base authentication, which is the industry, industry standard right now, presents some challenges. Um, EMV, um, the mass adoption here in the U.S. is increasing the rate of fraudulent ap applications. So more people, uh, more fraudsters are going to the online channels to um, uh, replace that income they've lost with EMV. Uh, there's a growth in synthetic uh, identity fraud. That's the situation where someone uses um, bits and parts of uh, information on an identity to create an entirely new credit file that then builds up uh, credit for that person until they eventually bust out and defraud your institution. That's a growing problem. The compliance requirements, of course, are key. Know your customer, anti-money laundering, um, all of those things are very important to risk and fraud strategies within your organization. And then, ultimately, when you have high abandonment rates, that impacts your revenue growth and your ability to bring in new customers. So these are the factors that um, really brought us to bring to market our Mobile Verify product. Mobile Verify is our instant ID document authentication product. Um, this is a combination of a best-in-class user experience with computer vision to enable an authentication of a driver's license or state ID or international document during your onboarding flow. What we're looking to do here um, is make sure that the customer has a, a near friction-free experience that capture the information that you need for your process and ensure that uh, they get through that in a timely fashion and in a seamless way. So components of the Mobile Verify solution, a great user experience. We're leveraging um, the MySnap auto capture experience that we've deployed for our, our mobile deposit customers. If you've ever done an automatic capture when you're doing a check deposit, this is the same um, for ID capture, and you'll see a demo of that today. Uh, we want to make sure that when we're doing the capture, the data we extract is fast and accurate, and we get that back in seconds so it can be used as part of the application flow. Uh, for uh, institutions that have a global footprint, we support authenticity um, across documents worldwide, and the processes we have put in place help support and achieve your uh, compliance needs. Uh, one unique feature that you'll see in our native demo is the ability to scan for the presence of an enhanced security feature. This is a, a, a feature that's invisible to the naked eye, but our um, native product can pick up on this during the capture, and that is uh, an indicator of the authenticity of the document. And then, of course, for those institutions that need that extra touch and review, we do offer expert review analysis across uh, the documents uh, globally. The big thing to take away from our Mobile Verify product is we reside at the intersection of identity verification and a great mobile user experience. We believe that those two are not mutually exclusive, so you can uh, meet your uh, risk and fraud compliance um, without increasing abandonment. You can augment or replace outdated knowledge-based authentication with our product. Uh, in many cases, you'd find that um, customers going through a knowledge-based authentication uh, may not remember what their car payment was from 10 years ago, but many fraudsters who are trying to open an account in that uh, consumer's name, they probably have a printout of all the information they need to get through that process quickly. Um, being able to offer um, a solution in native mobile web and desktop is key, and that's something that our mobile verify product um, is able to do, and we'll talk through that as we go through the demos. And then ultimately, back to our obsession, saying yes to more good customers and, and doing it uh, quickly. With that said, you're going to see a series of pre-recorded video clips. They're pre-recorded just so we can get through the, the webinar um, uh, in a timely fashion here. The first up is our Mobile Verify for Native. This is going to be broken into a, a, a few um, different clips so that I can talk through them. So imagine the, the um, ID capture here in the context of a new account opening. At some point in the process, the user or your customer would be presented with a prompt to um, bring out their driver's license. The first step is to scan the back of the license. Uh, most of the licenses in the U.S. have a PDF 417 barcode. Here the user is prompted to align the license to the uh, back of the uh, smartphone. Immediately we pick up on the barcode and we scan that information. 
That's the first step in the process. Next, the user would then be prompted to present the front of their driver's license. Here you can see messages popping up as the license is lined up. Get closer, get closer to the license. And then in that moment you see a capture and a verification occurs. That real-time messaging that you're seeing is part of our computer vision analysis that we're doing to ensure that we have the four corners of the document, that we have a brightness and sharpness within guidelines, and when we've got a perfect picture of the document, we capture it. At the same time, we are scanning for the presence of that enhanced security feature. Once both the barcode and the front have been captured, this information can be used to drive workflow. So the result that you see here is not likely what you would provide back to your uh, end user or your customer. This is just to show that the ID has been verified and the level of information that has been extracted from it. What you'd likely do with this information is use it to pre-fill the rest of the application or decide the next part of the workflow that the customer might go down. Having an ID verified with a positive result, this may fast track the customer to the next step. It could be a funding process or it could be a step up to the account that they're um, uh, looking to add. To demonstrate um, a scenario where some of the information may have been modified in the license, we're going to show you the mobile verify for native but with a partial match. Here we're going to purposely obstruct some information in the driver's license. So the user is going to go through the same flow as the first one. They're going to scan the back of the ID. They'll then be prompted to do the front. But here we're going to put in a, a, a fake portrait. So that portrait obstructing the one that was there before, it's blocking the security feature. And we'll be able to successfully capture the ID because we can line up and get the corners and the brightness and the um, sharpness exposure all correct. But because we block the face, we are blocking that security feature. Now, there may be other reasons why um, the information was obstructed. It could, could be wear and tear, could be um, the printing of the license. But here, we specifically put a face over the other face. Now, this would drive the workflow for this particular customer in a different direction. Here, you may have additional follow-up processes, or you may have some limitations on the account when they actually get, them, uh, get through the uh, funding process. We also have other um, statuses with this product. Uh, we can detect if no uh, glimmer of any security feature is there. That would indicate a high uh, likelihood of fraud um, or the license not being authentic at all. Uh, we also have situations where the information could be mismatched. So there could be parts of the uh, information on the license changed and that would um, be returned back to, to you as the developer or the um, um, provider of the application, which then changes the workflow for the, the consumer. So those are the native um, experiences. We also offer a solution in the mobile web. We see a large percentage of financial institutions do onboarding through the mobile web channel. If you think about it, most people are browsing um, in Safari or Chrome. Um, they find an ad or they visit the financial institution website directly and from there they initiate the flow. They may not jump immediately to download your native app from the App Store from Google Play. So here is an opportunity to provide some of the same uh, features uh, and capabilities that we have in native but in a, a minimized uh, browser version. So in this um, next video, we're prompting the user to present their driver's license. They'll go ahead and do uh, get started. There's some information that is given to the users to help guide them to a good picture. Uh, watch for glare, use a dark background, and then they take a photo. Here, due to browser limitations, we do not do a video-based capture. We require the user to capture. That is um, a limitation right now in how the browsers allow access to the video stream. Um, but with that, as soon as the uh, customer uses the photo, we're doing the same computer vision analysis that we do in native against that single frame to make sure we can detect four corners, to make sure the sharpness and the brightness and the other details of the license are good. Um, if it passes, we proceed to the next step, which is capturing the back of the driver's license. So here the, um, the consumer will be prompted to present the back of their ID or driver's license. They'll launch the camera, they'll take a picture, um, we're going to make sure that barcode is in full view, and then upon submitting, 
we're going to take the information from the barcode and from the front of the license to generate a pre-fill of a form, but we're also doing a verification of information across the front and back of the driver's license. So here, your onboarding form may not look like this, and you, of course, wouldn't provide the end user or your customer with a verification score, but you would use that to pre-fill the application and to drive workflow for that customer towards the next step. So whether it's native or mobile web, um, you can use Mobile Verify to speed up the um, onboarding process for a new account for your customer just by using a few um, snaps of the camera phone. So with that, we want to help you win the mobile moment. Um, I'm going to hand it back over to Lisa. I, I think we've got plenty of time um, for Q&A, and we'll take it from here. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Steve. Yes, we do have some time for Q&A, and if you, haven't, if you have a question, you haven't uh, entered it, it's still time, <laughs> go ahead and type it in the Ask Question box and hit Submit. Um, but let's go ahead and move to the first question that we have. Um, this one, I think, is directed to you, Steve. Um, does MyTech work with any European financial institutions, and is the solution approved by any European authority? Great question. We actually are working with um, several of the largest financial institutions in Europe. The processes that we have in place are helping those uh, institutions meet their uh, regula regulation and compliance requirements. Um, there is an additional check that the uh, European customers um, do that we didn't demo today, and that is uh, facial capture for a selfie comparison to the document. Um, that's something that is required in many of the jurisdictions in, in Europe. So um, we have products for that. Uh, we don't see that as um, common in the U.S. because the, the selfie uh, comparison is not required, but that's certainly uh, something that we offer to, to help our Euro European customers. All right, great. Thanks, Steve. Um, this next question, I think, is it would be great to start off with Brian. Um, Brian, do you see a need to start the process in the digital channel and then complete the application in another one? Ideally, no. Ideally, you would want to be able to complete the consumer. We want to be able to complete the process within the digital channel and not be forced to exit that or engage with the branch or contact center or whomever outside the channel. I do understand there may be reasons why that would be necessary, but that should be the exception. It should be necessary because you haven't been able to truly authenticate who the individual is and you want to do a follow-up. Or as they try to open their account, if you out, do out, reach out to the agencies to get some sort of risk score uh, and it comes back questionable or uh, somebody who's maybe had some challenges in the past and doesn't qualify to open the account, you want to reach out to them to maybe see if there's another account or another solution that would better fit them and where they are in their financial life. That would make sense. But those should be the exception. Ideally, you would keep them in the digital channel. Great. Brian, I mean, do you know, Brian, how many folks need to come into the, the branch or uh, use another channel um, at your bank, or is that so for us, it's, track? It's, well, yeah, for us, as I mentioned, we're close to 80% of existing clients opening accounts. So we've been very successful at allowing that to continue to flow through and all within the digital space and not have to engage with another channel. Uh, there are though, some exceptions, again, where it comes to uh, potential instances of fraud that we've caught in on the brand new where we may engage from a branch, but that's a very low percentage. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Steve, I think this is a, a question for you. Um, can you describe what type of deployment options um, MyTech sure. offers? Yeah, I can do that. So um, what you saw today in the user experience, that was part of our MySnap SDK. We offer a software development kit for iOS, Android, and mobile web. Those SDKs um, are compatible or are designed to work with our back-end platforms, which we offer both in a cloud-hosted um, environment as well as on-premise delivery. So we're pretty flexible in the way that um, our, our customers can deploy those. Uh, there's different uh, InfoSec concerns, information security concerns across um, different institutions, so we're, we're here to, to support whatever works best for them. Awesome. Thanks. Steve, I'm going to hit you with another question, and then I'm going to pass it along to um, Brian to see what First Financial Bank is doing. But um, have banks gotten rid of the traditional signature card with online account opening? Is that one for... No, for 
Yeah, for Steve. Okay. I mean, I, have you seen banks? I mean, do they have they gotten rid of the traditional signature card if they use something like digital account opening? Um, that's not an area that we typically get involved in. I don't know if okay. Brian has a little bit more feedback there. Yeah, Brian, is that something that um, you all, do you use traditional signature cards? No, we've eliminated those for digital account opening. Okay. So mobile or online, we've been able to eliminate those. Okay, great. And then, um, all right, Steve, let me hit you with a different question. <laughs> is MyTech integrated with any of the major U.S. digital account opening vendors? Yes, actually, um, we had a, another webinar recently with one of our partners, Avoca. Um, they've integrated our capture into their um, online account opening tool, and it's as simple as dragging and dropping to integrate the MyTech stuff. And, and it's certainly an area that we continue to um, grow in. MyTech itself does not offer a complete digital account opening flow. We're, we're just specific to the ID capture and um, the verification process. But yeah, uh -huh. to answer that, Avoca certainly is one that I can mention. Okay, great. Um, Brian, this is interesting. You, you had talked about um, you know, the fintechs and the disruptors to our mm -hmm. industry. Um, this is a question about should you partner with them? Should you, you know, uh, yeah, partner with fintechs or other companies to overcome these headwinds that you talked about? Well, they say keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Uh, so with that spirit in mind, no, yes. You know, there's, it is hard for, for you know, a bank of our size, institution of our size. I don't know the size of the folks that are on the call here, but there are many institutions that are not going to have the resources to be able to build a digital experience that are going to be able to rival the large national players here in this country. Being able to partner with good, solid fintech companies, companies that are bringing ideas and capabilities forward, uh, that are able to spread their costs among all their clients, and you have access now to uh, contemporary, well-designed, strong capabilities to advance what you can offer is absolutely critical. You will not be able to build all this by yourself. I'm not sure anyone can, really, at this stage. So I would encourage you to highly seek out fintech companies to partner with. All right, thank you. Um, Steve, a question for you. Is the user experience brandable? Great question. Yes. So the um, experience that you saw specifically in the native is fully customizable. Um, our MySnap SDK, which powers that experience, supports not just the ID capture, but the check um, for the, the uh, mobile deposit, and those can be changed, modified to match the colors, the branding, um, the actual uh, look and feel of the app that it's going in. So we, we allow that uh, fully. Okay. All right. Of course, uh, you know, a, a big issue is fraud. So I'm hoping that maybe each of you could address um, some of the common fraud uh, techniques or challenges that you see. Uh, maybe, Brian, we could start with you. Are there, what, what's going on in fraud and how are you addressing that? Sure, and, and I'm interested in what Steve has to say here too, but you know, certainly we've seen some of it. Steve's video demonstrated some of it out there of people trying to fake identification. Um, but the good news is our ability to screen that in the back end real time uh, is pretty strong. So the success of that fraud is, is very, very low, although people do try. What we're seeing more of is where people are actually paying real people uh, who do have the ability to qualify for account, don't have maybe disqualifying background, and paying them to open up an account on their behalf, and then using that to really, uh, well, commit fraud, right? Where they're able to take advantage of uh, cash of funds availability. Uh, hold notices and try to game that system to try to take advantage of that before it's identified and closed. Um, again, we've been successful in uh, uh, ferreting that out and preventing that, but we're seeing a growth in people at least trying that approach. Uh, Steve, anything you'd add? Yeah, yeah it's very interesting. We, we kind of bucket fraud into a few different categories. Um, one is impersonation, where, where this is more your traditional identity theft where someone's trying to use your specific information to get credit. Um, and we're seeing a lot of synthetic identity fraud. I mentioned that earlier in the presentation where someone is using 
multiple data points, maybe a real social, a real date of birth, a different name, different address to create uh, a person out of thin air. Um, in many cases, they use um, that information and they get an, maybe an authorized user for that person and they build credit up, over, uh, credit up over time until they eventually have a decent credit file and they look like a good customer, but then eventually they max all the cards out and they disappear and there's really no recourse for that. And how we impact, back, impact that is we're starting in the identity doc verification uh, first in that flow. So that some of the things that fraudsters do to either impersonate or to create a synthetic ID is modify existing IDs. So the use case in our, our second demo of putting a, a face over an, uh, an existing face, that might be done to take over someone's account and impersonate them because um, then they can go in with their face and um, you know, uh, withdraw money or, or create an account in that person's name. But other information might be changed in the document to create that synthetic ID. So we see changes in biographical data. Um, in an international use case, many times fraudsters will change the machine readable zone, the area at the bottom, and perhaps they don't use the right font or they don't do the checksum correctly. And those are the things that we catch um, to prevent them from actually getting through that, that flow. Great. Thanks, Steve. I just realized that we are at the top of the hour. I keep waiting for the little gong to go off and <laughs> end us here. But uh, it was a great question and uh, answer session. I want to thank everyone for attending today's webcast, Digital Account Opening, New Path to Profitability. You're going to receive a follow-up email with a link to the webinar on, de on demand. And on behalf of Brian Higgins with First Financial Bank and Steve Craig of MyTech, I'm Lisa Valentine for Banking Exchange. Thanks so much for your time and have a great day.